Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reviewing my Gucci Marmont shoulder bag. This beauty right here. Bag holder, my lip balm, lipstick. I've owned this bag for over four years now. Although it is no longer at the peak of its popularity, it is still very much my wardrobe staple. Today, I will provide an in-depth review of bag specifications, pros and cons, wear and tear, and a bit of design history. I will also show you some modeling shots of how it looks on me and what fits in this bag for your reference. On this channel, I love sharing my style journey when it comes to luxury reviews, outfit inspirations, and fashion tips. If you're interested in any of these topics, I would love for you to join my channel so we can share these fun experiences and some tips and tricks with each other. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. Gucci Marmont was launched in 2016 by Alessandro Michele, who wanted to revive the signature pieces of Gucci's history. The key feature is the GG Monogram hardware, which was inspired by the interlocking GG logo created in the 70s. The collection's name was inspired by Chateau Marmont, a legendary hotel in Los Angeles where celebrities have stayed throughout the decades. The most classic Marmont bag features Madelizé leather, which is a quilted leather. Another popular material is velvet. Due to popularity, Gucci Marmont comes in a variety of materials, colorways, shapes, and sizes. Me, my Gucci Marmont shoulder bag. It is made of this beautiful, soft chevron leather known as matelasse, which basically refers to the zigzag pattern here. On the back, there is a heart, the very controversial heart. A lot of people love it, some people hate it. I think that would be more practical if they replace it with a pocket. This color is called Dusty Pink, which in my opinion is the perfect nude that has a soft, neutral pink undertone and a subtle sheen to it. The sliding chain strap can be worn in multiple ways, which I will show you later. The hardware is made of this antique gold tone that has a matte finish and a naturally aged look. Overall, the bag has a softly structured shape, a flap closure, their signature GG logo, and a push lock. Inside, the lining is made of this microfiber that feels like suede. There's also a zipper pocket. Mine is in the small size, which measures 10 inches long, 6 inches tall, and 3 inches across. There are also other sizes available, such as super mini, mini, and medium. In terms of pros and cons, I've summarized four pros and three cons. I think that the number one benefit of the Gucci Maman bag is versatility. You can easily dress it up or dress it down and you can incorporate it into many different occasions. For example, this bag can be easily paired with a simple pair of jeans, a cute summer dress, or a more formal cocktail dress. You can also carry it in multiple ways. For example, when you double up the chain strap, you can carry it as a top handle bag or as a shoulder bag. And when you adjust the chain strap to the longest setting, you can also carry it as a crossbody bag, which is super convenient. Another pro of the Gucci Marmont bag is comfort level. As you can see, the chain strap here has a nice rounded shape and a good thickness to it. So when you wear it on your shoulder, it doesn't dig into your skin. There's also a small leather part on the chain strap, which makes it even more comfortable to wear. Overall, the bag is pretty lightweight, even though it is made of leather. Another pro is capacity. Gucci Marmont has such a great capacity, even though it's technically a small handbag. Compared to handbags, of similar size, Gucci Marmont actually holds a lot. I think it's because the leather is nice and soft and almost feels a bit stretchy and malleable. Last but not least, I just love this color so, so much. I think it's such a gorgeous nude with a nice and soft muted blush undertone that can be paired with a variety of colors and easily transitioned throughout all four seasons. Moving on to cons. I think the number one issue with Gucci Marmont is the soft construction. This bag is made of beautiful soft leather and just a single flap, so it doesn't have the most rigid construction. It also doesn't feel very sturdy at all. Over time, the bag tends to lose its shape. That's why I typically store this bag fully stuffed. Another con with this bag is durability. I start to notice some tarnish on the hardware, 
Also, the leather is definitely on the delicate side. Because it's super soft and smooth, it will be more prone to wear and tear such as scratches, wrinkles, and dents compared to a grained leather bag, for example. The final issue that I can think of is return on investment. This might be an important factor for you to consider if you plan on selling the bag in the future. I noticed that Gucci Marmont doesn't have the best resale prices because most people tend to classify this bag as a trendy bag, even though it does have a lot of the features of a classic handbag in my opinion. Overall, I still think that the pros outweigh the cons. Now I will show you what fits in my bag just so you have an idea. Right now the bag is fully empty and closed. To open it, you would just push the push lock right here. There is a zipper pocket where I leave my Gucci care card. I would add in my bag holder, my lip balm, lipstick, and let's close that right up. In the main compartment, I would add in my mask, a little catch-all. Then I would throw in my key pouch right in the corner. Card holder also goes in the corner. Of course, I would have my phone, but I'm using it for filming right now. There is still room for a pair of sunglasses, so let's fit that right in the middle. Now the bag is about at capacity. Let's close it right up and examine. You also have the option to use a compact size wallet. You just have to rearrange. For example, I would take out the sunglasses and perhaps a card holder. Here I have a compact size wallet that can go right in. If you prefer a full size wallet, you just have to take out a few more items. So here we go. I would take out the key pouch, my compact size wallet, and even the catch-all. Here I have my long wallet, which goes right in. Looks like we still have a little bit of room left, so you can potentially add your key pouch back. And looks a bit tight, but we can still close it just fine. Moving on to wear and tear, because the leather is super soft and supple and the bag is a bit squishy, you can see that the shape has become a bit flatter on the front and pointy at the top, although it is not super noticeable. In terms of leather, you can see that the front side is in pristine condition with no scratches or dents, but when you turn it around, you will see more folds and wrinkles. I tried buffing them out with my fingers, but didn't seem to work so well, so let me know if you have any suggestions. When it comes to hardware, the chain strap looks just fine. There's not a lot of tarnish or discoloration, so that's good. But the GG logo does show quite a few black dots that are fairly noticeable. I find it a bit disappointing because the logo is literally front and center of this bag that catches a lot of attention. To be honest, I would have expected the antique gold hardware to age a little bit better than this. Overall, I would still say that the bag is acceptable quality given that it's more than four years old. I do tend to baby this bag a little because the leather is super soft and delicate. This is one of the first serious designer bags I ever bought for myself. I still remember Gucci Marmont at the time was the id bag. I was so in love, so over the moon. Do I still like it and use it today? Yes. But if you ask me, would I repurchase this bag if I were to start my collection all over again? Probably not. Instead, I would go for a more classic piece with a longer history that could stand the test of time. But then again, I will not be selling this bag anytime soon because I think this bag is in such a gorgeous, unique, dusty pink color that I could never find a replacement for. Also, Gucci Marmont doesn't have the best resale market while it still holds a lot of sentimental value to me, so I think it is worth much more in my collection than not. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this bag? Do you love it? Do you hate it? If you have any questions, please leave your comments below and I will try my best to answer. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.